The next question is from Adolf. Adolf. This is for Dan. Uh -oh. Dan. See, I thought it was a question. Okay. Of course. Adolf would like to know, Dan, have you ever been in a movie like Don has? Oh. He thinks Don has a great screen presence, by the way. Thank you, Adolf. No, Dan's never first, been in a movie like I have. First, first of all, it's all these questions are aimed towards you, and then I get nothing there. Now I get, I get a question that's, you know. Aimed towards me. That, and, and what great presence you have on, on the screen and stuff like that. Oh, Dan, you, you know, when you got it, you got it, baby. I mean, there was you at Godzilla, then there was you with Mothra, and there was you with, uh, you know, a few of those other type of things. A few of those other things. Yeah. <laughs> those, other, those other movies, yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, uh, yes, I have been involved in a few uh, other movies there, you know, but uh, nothing to the magnitude of Mr. Fry's over here. So, it's, uh, I'm playing second fiddle, yes. Now, there was a great movie that I was about in, and it was called Rudy. It was based on Notre Dame football, and it actually was a, uh, a real, a true uh, story of a gentleman by the name of Rudy Rudiger that was actually a very small uh, football player, and his desire was to play for Notre Dame, and I'm not going to spill the rest of the beans, but he was just, it's just a great story that, that depicts his, his life that, and my role was I was just a football extra. They just needed a bunch of big goody players that they could put shoulder pads and helmets on and bang and clash and, and I somehow fit the role. I'm a big that. goon. Yeah, just a, a big goon. Yeah. None of these eloquent speaking engagements is kind of going, I guess I just, with a helmet on, I don't have the same stage presence of a younger Mr. Rick Rude, Don Fry. Yeah, that's it, you baby. Know. You're just... You're just a water boy. <laughs> you ride the pine. Mighty fine H two O. Mighty fine H two O. Riding the pine. Next question is from Jake. Jacob Weaver. This is for Don. Of, of course, course, it's for Don. Yes, it is. Of Wait a. Where's Where's my script writers here right now? Wait, I need a few more people writing in for me here now. Come on, what's up with this? Somebody calling. Uh, I don't think all, all your fans died of old age. <laughs> They got you the question coming in by carrier pigeon. God. Yeah, I feel like the See, Rod, I feel like the Rodney Dangerfield of uh, the MMA world here now. You know, just get no respect, get no respect. Well, for God's sake, have you seen yourself, God? Damn. <laughs> Jacob would like to know, Don, what you think about Nganu using the name the Predator. I think he's done a great job with it. You know, um, he's uh, carried it up. To the level well, where it's been, uh, in between us, a couple of ding dongs got hold of it, ruined it. But he brought it back up to the stage and uh, give me a year to get healthy and in shape, and I'll go predator versus predator against you, Mr. Gano. Give me a year. You heard it here first, folks. I'll write that down there, Mr. Fry. It's Y E A R. Come <laughs> here, baby. All right, next question from Zimzum16. If it was possible for you to go into any weight class at any time in the UFC, what weight would you fight at and who would you fight? And this question is for both of you. I've never really been offered up that any weight class. I've usually went, you know, pretty much catered just to one weight class, just yeah. the, the heavy heavyweights. Well, yeah. unlimited, right? Yeah, no weight I mean, class. And, uh, I mean, especially uh, during all my, my days of college, it was either 185 or heavyweight, or in college it was 190 or, or heavyweight. And a lot of times it was just such a tough cut there that uh, I did bounce. I just stayed at heavyweight sometimes. And even in my international experience, I was doing either 198, uh, 220, or heavyweight. So, just like to chow down at times, you know? Yeah, that was my, I started out 167 and 77 and 90, and one day I was just pissing on I'm never cutting weight again. And I, I didn't. I was in an international tournament in Concord, Greco Roman, and they. They uh, said, you know, we went eight, 
and then they said, well, we'll give everybody three pounds or something like that. And uh, I, I weighed in, and as one pound over, I was pissed when I go up. <laughs> I wasn't even. Uh, How many bitches uh, tried to lose that nope, one pound? Nope, didn't care. But some Russian got older me and made me wish I did. <laughs> Gave me, gave me uh, flying lessons. <laughs> yeah, the Rus Russians were great, uh, great technicians, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, anyone you guys would have liked to have fought that you didn't get a chance to fight? Holly Holm. I'd like to fight Holly. In the ring, dog. Oh, oh, the cage. <laughs> the cage, yes. We're I'll, I'll fight her in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> I got a cage. <laughs> right? Uh, again, I, my, my response is I, I mean, I just look at it as, as uh, you know, just whatever opportunities that were coming at, at, at hand, I just I took those opportunities. I don't have quite as a witty of a response as Mr. Fry over here has. Well, give me a year and I'll, I'll go after the Gano. Okay. Noah Brassel. He would like to know if you two were in a tag team match against Godzilla and King Kong, how quickly would y'all make those pansies cry to their mommies? Good man, good man. Damn right, that's the way it would go. They would probably be offended by the by uh, Mr. Severn not taking a bath, you know, and they couldn't handle the smell. And they would cringe. But either way, we would still win, right? Yes, we would win. Okay. But would, you, would you stand there with me in, in a united effort as I raise my arm? No, I'd like stand that? over here, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> wow. But think of all the commercial endorsements, so, you know, maybe like Right Guard or something yeah. like that, or, you know, maybe Glad, Irish, Glad Irish, 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 Irish Spring or something like that, you know? <laughs> So deodorant, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, here, here's one here. You might remember this little jingle. Little old spice, maybe. For me, maybe a, a living free douche. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Obviously, you had a, a double dose of Geritol there today. You're yeah. very, you're, you're quite witty here today. Yeah, I took yours one? today. <laughs> is that what it is? Geritol Magnum. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm surrounded by Don Fry's here right now. I'm just being pummeled, it's pummeled. It's scary, isn't it? Uh, it's it terrible. is. Yeah, you get, get your age, you know, you start seeing shit. <laughs> Hearing noises. Pretty. Is there is there anything on that page that, that helps me out over here? This is Dan okay. Severn. The, the ghosts of Gettysburg are waiting for you, Dan. Do I need to write some questions on this just to hand over to you? Right? I do have a question here specifically for Dan. Oh. Do we want to oh, let's, that one? Let's, let's yes, let's hear it. Let's bypass all those others for Dan. Let's, let's go with... It was only two away, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and skip okay. the one before. All right, I'm already here. Dan, what do you think of Don's mustache? <laughs> Well, if you take out the wheat whacker, it's, it's, it's a little uncontrollable here, you know. This uh, message is this one comments from David Collins, and he wants to know, Dan, who are some of the best guys to work with during your WWF days, and who was the worst? Oh, so we're just gonna go to a professional. Talk about somebody else. <laughs> Dan, what do you think about? <laughs> wow, I mean. Professional wrestling of all things we have to talk about right now. We've been all doing all this reality questions here. Now we're into professional wrestling, one on one. I mean, when it comes to professional wrestling, you know, it's it's that uh, the world of fantasy where anything can and will happen. So, you know, can I do I say that uh, there's some people that I'm not as trustworthy in putting my body into their hands because I'm not certain if they have the brain with all to uh, know how to protect my body. Yeah. And I have had some people actually hurt me and, and now look what's, look what's such in before you. Damaged goods. You know. Yeah. I mean, you know, and now, <laughs> and now I have to have Mr. Fry helps by, you know, carry the, you know, carry the load here, moving forward here on all these questions from Juan. And, yeah, uh, yeah. damaged goods. I think that's what your uh, bride said on Brown Night, right? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's not what I bought. 
<laughs> Send it back. I want my money back. Quinn, bite him. Bite him, Quinn. All right, well, uh, I don't know if we answered the question there. No, not. yeah, you skipped TV to so, who do you work, who was good to work with, who wasn't. I mean, uh, you know, the people I worked with, I worked with, uh, with Steve Blackwood, I ended up working with uh, Owen Hart, uh, Ken Shamrock. I mean, basically, it was kind of like a, they were putting a uh, different type of what they refer to as like the, like the, the shooter group, the, uh, uh, the guys that came from like mixed martial arts and the Doho's Bar era. You know, it was actually, I mean, I, I enjoyed working with like, with Owen. He actually, uh, especially when he did his, his blue blazer gimmick, you know, he really enjoyed uh, putting out that blue blazer outfit. You could always see like the little childlike. Uh, kid out comes out. He just did that. That's got to you know do things. He enjoyed that. Yeah, he did. He enjoyed it a great deal. Enjoyed it a great deal. Like I said it's tragic of what, what happened. You know what was uh, everything uh, that led to that uh, pay per view that. But uh, it was uh, you know he did what he was really enjoying. I mean it, it was in, in that that whole family. You know, we look at uh, the Hart family. Uh, with, with Stu Hart and the Dungeon and what uh, what he built up there with the Stampede Wrestling. He, you know, he produced a lot of great wrestlers out of uh, the dungeon. Yeah. That's what it's known as. And it was basically just a training facility right there in the basement of the, the Hart Residence. You so, worked out there, right? Well, I, I basically I was out there just the one time when they did uh, the dungeon match between Owen Hart and uh, Ken Shamrock. Mm -hmm. And I was a special guest referee. So literally while they are set up all their cameras and lighting and, and all that, uh, um, I was actually up in the living room uh, talking with uh, Stu Hart. So that was really great. Two old men swapped the stories about the good old days, huh? Yippers. Did you, did you give you him any pointer, any, any, any tips sir. since he was younger than you? <laughs> the junior <laughs> Oh my, oh my God. Yeah, I know, I feel the same way there, Quinn. You get him, get him, Quinn, yeah. So, uh, are there any other questions that are the, the, the skies for the dead, that are for other, me that really people. have nothing to, to, to do with uh, Mr. Fry here? I know we're going, going live. Is anyone coming up on the, on the screen here so far to any live questions? <laughs> so, we got one from Sean here. It's for both of you. Dan and Don, who in your opinion is currently the best pound for pound fighter in MMA and also in your opinion who's the best pound for pound fighter of all time? Don Fry was the best of all time. I'd say, you know. He uh, was in there 200 pounds and whooping whooping ass people. 60, 80 pounds heavier than him. I, I fought the guy twice my weight. So but you know, I mean that I did that you did that on a couple of occasions. Both in the UFC, yeah. but then also in the uh, Prime. Pri yeah. I think it was heroes. I try to think that that the uh, Primal was that. Aki Bono was heroes. Okay, all right. I just that that was I just knew that was in Japan. I just yeah. assumed that was Prime. Yeah, you definitely uh, face people far bigger in your uh, MMA career. I mean, I, I wrestled. Uh, I wrestled heavyweight, and when the, the heavyweight weight class used to be unrestricted, and just just at Arizona State. One of my workout partners was James Mitchell. James Mitchell weighed just over 400 pounds. Yeah. So I always say that, you know, seven days a week, and in the preseason, three times a day, I had to work out with a 420 pound man. So yeah, they, they, going? Bobby D put me with Matt Gaffari. Oh, yeah. there you go. There, there, there's another big one going. And it was over 300 pounds. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that actually went out to win uh, some very second. prestigious tournaments. Yeah. Well, he took second silver in the yeah. Olympics, right? Yeah. What so, year was that, 96 or 92? Couldn't tell you that, okay. Time just keeps changing. Just keeps changing, go down. To time, time like to you is a blink of the eye, right? Yeah. You know, we used to tell time with an hourglass, and now we're using the watch and everything else. Sorry, Siri, Siri, what time is it now? It yeah. Tells you, the Dick Tracy watches. So, all right. <laughs> 